Next question is from Derringer Thomas. What are the best stretches for flat feet? Well, you're looking at stretches, mobility, and strengthening, right? Mm. So flat feet uh, can be caused by poor ankle mobility, but also from just having weak feet. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, it's funny. Uh, for 99% of my career as a trainer, I totally didn't even think about the fact that the bottom of your foot – is covered in muscles. I didn't mm -hmm. even think about that. It was like and like uh, seven thousand nerves. Oh yeah. yeah, I mean it was. I didn't even look at the, anybody's foot. I, when I assess people, it stopped. It was at. It was the knee. Was the lowest mm -hmm. I went. And it was, might yeah. as well be covered in concrete. Totally yeah. right. So um, I didn't pay attention to that at all. So there are muscles on the bottom of your foot that can be strengthened. There's a movement called short foot, which helps you contract some of the muscles that create an arch. In fact, that's the movement. Short foot is giving your foot an arch. I when I first tried short foot, I couldn't even do it. You might as well tell me to fly. It's like I didn't even know what I was doing. I had no connection to those muscles. But through practice, I can now do short foot, and I've given myself a little bit more of an arch. The other thing I, I said was ankle mobility. Mm -hmm. um, combat stretch is a great uh, mobility movement to help improve mobility in ankles. Those two things for a lot of people help yeah. fix flat well, feet. Yeah, and just getting more connection there to your foot and activation is uh, articulating each one of your toes individually, which sounds really simple and basic, but it's pretty challenging, especially... So uh, hard. Yeah, for, for anybody who's been stuffed in shoes forever, and uh, I know, like, so I have a hammer toe, and so I, I have a tendency <laughs> to really grab in, uh, and so I have a really hard time flexing my toes and uh this is a very challenging exercise for me that i had to go through but it, it totally uh made a difference in terms of my connection my grounding and my force production from my feet sounds like a pro wrestling move <laughs> <laughs> here comes justin with the hammer toe I don't, know, I don't know if my son is here right now or not i think that katrina and him are coming down here but you, I, I just since we're talking about this and i was just thinking about this yesterday is like so he is now. I've trained him so well with no shoes. I know you're so proud of it. And you did such a good job. I am. <laughs> I am proud of this because he. Won't, it's so funny because now yeah. like other family members when they watch him, they he won't put his shoes on. He'll they'll try and put his shoes on. He'll take them off. So he doesn't wear shoes ever. Like oh, ever, ever, great. ever. Only time I can get him to put them on is if we are like out in the snow up in Truckee or something yeah. like that. And it is to see the dexterity that he has in his toes. Like his his feet and toes move like my hands do. Mm -hmm. It is I'm so jealous of watching. And I'll like play with him and tickle him and mess with him. And he can spread his toes all the way out and move them all. Oh, quick. that's awesome. Oh, yeah, and it's so awesome. Great. And I feel like when I look at the way he moves. You know, I, I know we were joking the other podcast today when I said, oh, "Did you see his footwork when he was playing yeah, basketball?" Yeah. But his uh, his control and stability, like he really didn't go through. I watched my other two friends, and they, they and they. I remember when they said, like, uh, when he first started kind of walking and running around, they're like, "Oh my God, you're gonna go crazy because you're gonna, you know, be so worried he's gonna hit his head here and fall there." And I really didn't go through a phase like that. As soon as he could get to a place where he could walk pretty well, of course, we had a first couple weeks mm -hmm. the, the stability of like learning to walk. Once he had got it down, he's got great control where he does not stumble. And the only times that we've had issues is when we've put shoes. Because he doesn't on. have that feedback. Yes, yeah. we've given we've put shoes on him. That one time when he fell and he hit his head and Katrina freaked out because blood came out and everything was she put shoes on him and he he just, he squatted down to pick up mm. a rock and he fell forward because of the instability. So, anyways, the uh, yeah. reason I, I want to share just the importance of you know walking around barefoot. Uh, and and I, what I don't recommend is somebody who has weak, flat feet to go from, you know, wearing your big old, you know, sketcher shoes to all of a sudden. And then you know, walk with a bunch of dead feet. Yeah, well, yeah. and then go running on a treadmill with those Vibra shoes or whatever yeah. they're called, you know, and saying, or go barefoot exercise. Like, you know, just start by, and I, for me, the way this started was I would just, I would walk the dogs, you know, because that's only a short little five, 10 minute walk for me. And I would do it barefoot. I get out. I take him out on the grass, and and I'd walk around and just start to get that connection again. Mm -hmm. um, I took one out of a, one of my buddy who's a who's a PT. He used to do this exercise that is really challenging, but seems so basic. You can do it while you're watching TV, and you throw a towel or some tissue paper on the ground, and you just you try and pick it up. And you move it, and then you take the other the other foot, pick it up, and you move it. And just like Justin was saying, is is reestablishing that connection to being able to articulate the toes and the foot 
to me, that's the kind of the laying the foundation. Mm -hmm. And then once you start to kind of get that and you start to progress that, now we can really try and strengthen, which I then I think of things like short foot or I love tippy toe squats. Yeah. I love that because I'm always yeah, trying to practice up. squatting anyways and getting better. And that addresses both uh, ankle stability yeah. and strength, strength in addition. And your forefoot as and well. your forefoot all yeah. in, in one movement. And uh, there's good video. I think I I think I've done a video on my Instagram way back when. I believe Squat University. I think I stole some content from them that I thought was really good. Where uh, you take a quarter and you put it on the ground. You put two quarters down on the ground, like where you would you put your feet to squat, and you want it on the uh, your fat pad, right under where your uh, the big where, toe. Yeah, where the big toe is, and you're and you're trying to think of driving up from that. And when you drive up onto your tippy toes, the thing you're looking for is that you can keep the ankle neutral. What you'll see is a lot of people when they drive up on their tippy toes, they break out or in. Yep. And so you want to keep that stability while you're up on your tippy toes. And so that yeah. just doing- You can also get a lacrosse ball to, to put between- uh, Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yes. So between like above your ankles, but like you're squeezing it in between your feet and you're raising your heels like that. So I've done and performed some some tippy toe squats like that as well. One other thing too with the, the flat foot, I've noticed like when I, I, I used to get this every now and then when I would gain weight, like uh, going into the off season and I would go back to running and I would find myself like really running it on. On uh, flat foot and, mm -hmm. and and losing that connection and so you know that might be another contributing factor is a gain of it's weight. It's so crazy how much and Sal alluded to this about when it was it was Doctor Brink who like I think just like shattered all of our paradigms with with how important the foot is and really looking at that because and and now I can't help but walk behind somebody and just look at the wear on their soles or their shoes mm -hmm. and like know what's probably going on with them. Because if you've got flat feet and you've got, you're pronating more on one side or the other, you can just basically, you know, ping pong up the uh, kinetic chain and know that, oh, their their left knee probably bothers them here. Oh, their right hip is probably bothering mm -hmm. here. Oh, their low back on this side. And then show it's crazy how much that if, if you are not, if you're not really on that tripod and balanced well on your feet, how that could be causing pain in areas in your body that's way away from it. And so you would, and even as a trainer, I would just, a client told me they had a, a you know, shoulder or hip or low back issue. I, I would never think to go look at their feet yep. where now that's the very first thing that I look at when someone tells me about any pain is I first look down there and see, is this where it's stemming from? And then it's causing it all the way up.